I built these little M900 servers for my friends and family who don't want the burden of a full-size server, but on my own home, I have these big, loud, hot and heavy full-size servers. And when I show you the three-fold grid simulator results in here in a second, you're going to see why it's worth to put these giant, hot, heavy <laughs> jet engines in your living room to make you a lot of money. Here we are at the simulator website. I have the Titan pulled up, which is their um, threefold node that threefold sells directly. It issues about 360 TFT a month, or after five years at a $2 token price, about $42,000. The M900 mini server, which I showed how to build a few videos ago, is about 560 TFT a month, or about $66,000. The big servers I, I just showed you, 2,600 TFT a month. Five year potential profit, $300,000. This is why it's worthwhile setting these up where you live if you think you can pull it off and have the space. Now let's go crack one open. I'll show you what's inside and how to maximize profitability on them. All right, let's break open the HP. Up front, you have two 8-core processors, that's 16 virtual cores apiece, or 32 virtual cores total. 256 gigabytes of RAM is in there, which is an enormous amount, more than I ever thought would be possible. This is the optimal ratio between CPUs and RAM. Increasing the CPUs or the RAM separately here will not increase, increase profitability. As far as storage goes, I have here a Intel P3600 data center SSD of 2 terabytes, and an M2 SSD, and an adapter to connect it to the PCIe slots because there are not M2 slots in the server. There are also not any SATA slots. Do not attempt to put a SATA drive in the back of a server. In the front, where you would expect to normally put your storage in these drive bays is controlled by a RAID controller. RAID is not compatible with Zero OS, so you will have to do some configuration settings to set it up to be a JBOD or a RAID Zero to work. This is beyond the scope of this video. I am not attempting to do it. I recommend that you put the drives in the back of the server so you don't have to deal with setting this up. If you do have drives that you really want to put in here and deal with the setup, these will accept uh, SAS or SATA drives. From what I've gathered on the threefold library, this enormous amount of memory and compute, compute units will require uh, 3.2 terabytes of solid state a drive to maximize profitability otherwise you're going to be limited according to this formula here there's a couple ways to do that since these are servers it makes sense to me to put server quality or drives in them uh, one of the most common and inexpensive drives is the Intel P3600 which has an enormously high um, bytes written limit um, of uh, here's 6.57 PBW, which is uh, over 6,000 PBW. The really the optimal size you'd be looking at probably is the 1.6 terabyte, which is over 8 PBW. Getting two of these 1.6 terabyte drives should be perfect for your setup, uh, since that comes out to 3.2 terabytes. There are a couple different, there's two different form factors of these, these direct PCIe uh, slot drives and these U2 uh, drives. Your server probably will not have a, a slot for these uh, unless it's a very recent server. So you will have to use a adapter such as one of these to search for a, a U2 adapter on Amazon 
personally I'm a fan of this one here. Notice the big hole here for cooling. It does come with an extra SATA slot there, which you're not going to use because there's no way to power a SATA drive from in, inside of a server. You can also do an M2 drive inside, which I, as you saw, I did because I had one uh, already ready. Um, Inland premiums have extremely high TVW, but you can use whatever if you're looking to save a few dollars. You will, of course, need an adapter such as this one by Sprint to convert a M2 drive to a PCIe slot. They're simply plug and play, you just put them right in. As far as finding one of these servers uh, to mine TFT on, you're going to want to probably go to Amazon or eBay and uh, scroll around to find a 256 gigabyte RAM server. The hard part is finding a server with enough RAM. Finding one with two 8-core processors is pretty standard, not something that is probably going to disqualify what you need, but getting enough RAM is hard to find. If you get desperate and can't find what you need, second-hand server RAM is not that expensive. Here's a quick one I pulled up. Um, that is a really good candidate. It has your two 8-core processors and 256 gigabytes of RAM. This so this was a this is definitely this I would say this a decent deal here. Um, hundred dollar shipping was a little high, of course, so about four hundred dollar total shipped. That is a little on the lower end of what you can expect to find, but between four and five hundred dollars, um, and in a week or two of looking, you should be able to find what you need. Don't fret about there not being any drive bays up front unless you are already set on putting some drives up there since you will probably only put your drives in the back. If you're not familiar with servers, which I wasn't until two weeks ago, be aware that there are two different kinds. The standalone kind, such as this one here, which uh, uses two power cords right in the back, which by the way, probably doesn't come with. And then there is a blade server, which requires a special rack that is already has some kind of power adapter built in. These are often a good deal, but as you can tell from the back of this one, there's no way to directly power it. So unless you feel like buying a special rack to power these, you should stay away from them. Uh, don't mess up and accidentally order one. They, you can tell, um, hopefully somewhere in the description it calls it a blade server, but they are a very different size. They're much narrower than the server that you should get and they have this uh, weird back where it pushes directly into the, the power supply and in the, in the rack. In my previous videos I've already really gone up on how to set up your threefold node but there are some weird differences instead of a server that I found out in my attempt. Um, they have an enormous BIOS um, setting selection. It can be overwhelming um, on one of them, I gave up trying to get it to boot from a USB drive, and I actually just pulled up my old my old CD burner and uh, burned it my image, uh, the ISO image, directly to a CD and put it into the CD drive because most of these servers do have CD drives, and it booted from there, no issue. Um, just a side note in the BIOS, that UEFI is going to refer most likely to your USB drive and a BIOS boot often refers to booting from CD. So if you don't see CD or USB, keep an eye out for those options. Also, they do not have HDMI. You will need either A, a VGA HDMI adapter, which by the way, did not work for me. I don't know if it was my monitor, the server, or this cheap Amazon adapter. I could not get a signal to stay up for more than a few moments. I actually had to pick up a VGA monitor, or, or you can use your television if it has a VGA. You're not gonna need to use it often, so try to avoid buying a new monitor if you don't need one, but be prepared and have that cord on hand. And, and a monitor. Remember, use the same image and farmer ID for all of your nodes. No need to go through all these steps every time and re-download your image unless you're switching between USB and CD because there are different images for that. 
If you have any questions about the setup, put them in the comments below. I'll put any helpful links or links I used in the description. And good luck setting up your new hot, loud commercial server.